Good evening and welcome to evening prayer for Wednesday the 26th of August. In the prayer book, the service begins on page 404. And the psalm this evening is Psalm 139, and that's on page 370. Wednesday evening. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now, and forever. And the opening canticle, a song of praise. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth will bring forth its increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. You, O God, will bless us, and all the ends of the earth will fear you. The day is now past, and the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Father of lights, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know when I sit or when I stand. You comprehend my thoughts long before. You discern my path and the places where I rest. You are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, Lord, know it all together. You have encompassed me behind and before and have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot endure it. Where shall I go from your spirit or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the grave, you are there also. If I spread out my wings towards the morning or dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the night will enclose me, the darkness is no darkness with you, but the night is as clear as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike. For you have created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you. For you are to be feared, fearful are your acts and wonderful your works. You knew my soul and my bones were not hidden from you. When I was formed in secret and woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my limbs when they were yet imperfect, and in your book were all my members written. Day by day they were fashioned, and not one was late in growing. How deep are your thoughts to me, O God, and how great is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they are more in numbers than the sand. Were I to come to the end, I would be still with you. If only you would slay the wicked, O God, if only the bloodthirsty would depart from me. For they affront you by their evil, and your enemies exalt themselves against you. Do I not hate them, O Lord, that hate you? Do I not loathe those who rebel against you? I hate them with a perfect hatred. They have become my enemies. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Put me to proof and know my thoughts. Look well, lest there be any way of wickedness in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting.
God of all power and might, the earther and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's from Romans 15, beginning at verse 14. I myself feel confident about you, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge and able to instruct one another. Nevertheless, on some points I have written to you rather boldly by way of reminder because of the grace given me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to boast of my work for God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to win obedience from the Gentiles by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and as far around Illyricum I have fully proclaimed the good news of Christ. Thus I make it my ambition to proclaim the good news, not where Christ has already been named, so that I do not build on someone else's foundation, but as it is written, those who have never been told of him shall see, and those who have never heard of him shall understand. May your word live in us and bear much fruit for your glory. And the canticle, the song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, who has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. The Lord has shown strength with his arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Creator God, You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Teach us to offer ourselves to your service, that here we may have your peace, and in the world to come may see you face to face, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we offer our prayer and thanksgiving, This morning we give thanks for the Awabiko people, the traditional owners of this land and their past and ongoing custodianship. We pray for this earth on which we are all dependent. We thank you, Lord, for its beauty, its bounty. We pray for those who are recovering from the decimation of past fires and in California, current trauma. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the world, those whose economic reach is international. We pray for the various countries that are approaching or have just had elections. We pray particularly for those who are in opposition that their voice might be a useful one in conversations about ways for their countries to move forward in a way which mimics your model of mercy and compassion where service is leading. In our own country, we pray particularly for the premiers of the eastern states as they seek to try and both impose restrictions to contain the virus while not closing down the economy. We pray for wisdom for them and their advisers. We pray support from the federal and other levels of government. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the church. We pray particularly in this diocese for our Bishop Peter and his assistant Bishop Sonia and Charlie. We pray for the clergy and people of the parishes of Cessnock, Denman, East Maitland, Dungog and Clarence Town. We pray for all of those who are in leadership in various parishes and agencies, that they are energised by your spirit to continue to lead with creativity for the time which speaks of your gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are unwell, we pray particularly for those who suffer with mental health issues, for those whose anxieties have been raised for the first time. We pray for those whose shelter and sustenance are at risk. We pray for the many agencies, particularly the Samaritans, who seek to provide a tangible foundation that is a witness to your people's love and your care of us all. We pray for those who are undergoing surgeries and procedures this week, especially those who, because of the virus, are also isolated from familial support. We pray too for those on the front line for the medical staff whose calling and vocation and work is always a tough one and whose ministry has increased in difficulty in the last while. We pray for their confidence and for their safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who are struggling to continue a pattern of learning and teaching, praying particularly for the University of Newcastle, the staff and students, and the chaplains on the Newcastle Central Coast campuses. We pray that they are open to learning not just facts and figures, but to reflect on the mercy and the compassion that is being shown to each other and highlighted because of this virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn. We pray particularly for those who will die this night. For those who are able to be with them and most particularly courage for those not able to. 
We give thanks for those who live in our hearts and feast already at your table, most especially for those who have pointed beyond themselves to you and the abundant life you would have for us all. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May our Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father comfort our hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Amen. Amen.